Hello my friends, Mike here again and today I'm going to show you an amazing instrument collection I just got from Acoustic Samples called V-Winds Double Reeds. So let's start with the most important thing first, the sound. This is a short composition I made using all the instruments from V-Winds Double Reeds. sound and tone and as you hear from my composition here it actually blends very well with my full strings ensemble here and the backing piano and the only thing I had to do was to use the virtual space feature which I will show later in the video in the plugin itself and some extra reverb here and of course you, if you want to you can add an external reverb um, on uh, in your DAW but uh, let's dive into the actual instrument. So you can see here, it loads in the UVI engine. It's not a contact sample library. And I am actually a huge fan of UVI. So they are, like native instruments, they make this engine, this sample library engine. Uh, and you can get lots of sample libraries. You can, as you can see, I have some here. Um, but what do you get with this bundle? You can buy the instruments separately, I think, but uh, I would recommend getting the bundle because you want the collection in the orchestra. So you get the contrabassoon, bassoon, English horn, and oboe. So all these instruments share one a common feature, which is that they are double reed instruments, as you can hear from the name uh, V-Winds double reeds. So a clarinet and a saxophone are single reed instruments. Uh, double reeds are very rare instruments, but they have a unique tone. Uh, it is very difficult to describe, you simply have to listen to it. And also, the bassoon and contrabassoon are basically uh, just different versions, like a violin and a cello, basically. Uh, or a viola and cello, whatever. It's like a bigger version. And the English horn is the same, slightly longer, slightly bigger than the oboe. So those are part of the same subfamily, you can say. So let's play something now. This is the contrabassoon. Now, what I do, I just play my keyboard and ride the mod wheel, which I have mapped here to CC1 uh, Dynamics. And this is what I did for this composition. No programming, no key switches. I simply recorded one pass of the each line here and used the mod wheel to uh, create the dynamic swells and ebbs and flows. So you, it is based on basically the uh, velocity level per note plus um, if they are overlapping legato and the dynamics here. So very playable. Uh, so if I just play and play it very soft. You can hear the is gliding long legato. And it, it adapts your playing. So still legato if I hold them with no gap in between the notes. Okay, but you can do staccato also. Just uh, uh, mark the notes a little bit more accented and then uh, use a gap in between the notes. Right? Super fun and very, very efficient. I wish all sample library developers would start using this type of technology where you can actually play the instrument without using any key switcher. I have like 25 real actual instruments and I don't have to push a button to change the playing style. I want to be able to perform as I do on the instrument uh, myself, on an acoustic instrument, on my keyboard with using some uh, the mod wheel, or in my case, I highly recommend if you want to play wind instruments like this, 
to use a breath controller, which basically allows you to ride the mod wheel without, well, riding the mod wheel. So now you can see on the screen CC1, the same one as the mod wheel, the advantage of a breath controller is that you actually force yourself to think about the breath power and that you need to breathe. So, of course, now you hear the actual uh, mouthpiece here, but... So, sorry about that, but just to show you that I like to use for wind instruments like brass and woodwinds, uh, the breath control. You don't have to, you can use the mod wheel. Plus, they have vibrato control, so now it's on auto time. I have mapped it to CC2. I love this quick mapping, by the way. Just, you don't even have to right click, just, it's here. Super efficient. If you want to change it, if you have one of your faders mapped to, later, let's say, CC11 or whatever, um, I think that's the default. But I have a fader here on my MIDI keyboard, that's CC2, so now I can... You can see the strength of the vibrato. But our auto time means it will ebb and flow into the vibrato and out uh, better. So I, I actually like to leave it on that. Okay, uh, what else? Well, uh, to blend it, the only thing I need to do was the virtual space, and this Another thing, I wish I wish they made a pl basically a VST plugin out of this because it's genius, uh, or like every other instrument developer would in implement it in any way. Because look at this virtual space. You see the orchestral chairs here, and you see where you are here, right? You can change the microphone pair pa type, like uh, you. I, I don't even know or. If I change this, it's a different type of setup for the stereo. Um, what was it? Wide? Uh, AB? You can, you can see the microphones, you can see the room size and stereo width. So if I... Yeah, I have it here. I can put it like left and right. Close. You want the bases closed. You want them further back. I, I mean, this is genius. Uh, so you can do that for all the instruments. We so put the bassoons, let's say, I put them right there and the contra bassoons there to give it some stereo space in left and right and front and back. So that's super nice. Let's play the, uh, the bass saxophone, the bassoon. <laughs> uh, I mean... It's so lovely to be able to play like that. Um, I also added some extra reverb here, so virtual space, but as I mentioned, you can do it on, in your DW as well, so you don't actually need... This one is optional, but uh, these two are, I mean, amazing. The dynamics and the vibrato control. Uh, but if you want to dive even deeper, just uh, this is not a walkthrough or anything of all the features. They have better videos for that, but I just want to quickly show you that you can go super in-depth and go crazy with the editing of the sound and tone, like the pitch here, the vibrato, legato transitions, uh, so much stuff to do. I don't even want to touch that, to be honest. I think the, the default is amazing. So I don't know the uh, CPU usage. I can see here it's... But I have a new computer, so... But I haven't found it to uh, be heavy on the CPU either, but in terms of RAM, it's like literally nothing compared to ordinary uh, sample libraries. I mean, check this out. This instrument is like 39 megs. This instrument is 32 megs. Go and check your like uh, cello in whatever sample library. It's like pff, if you load every microphone and every uh, articulation, it's, it's insane. It can be over one gigabyte per instrument. So this will save a lot of RAM, I tell you that. Then you have the English horn. This is the only glitch, by the way. The only glitch I found, which could be like some uh, feature of... Uh, are you, I'm using Logic Pro, latest version, latest Mac, OS Ventura. Uh, the graphics, if you'd see this. So sometimes I need to close and open uh, up again so it loads the interface. It could be like a graphics setting on my part. Just want to show. It's like the only glitch... I found. So, uh, the English horn. 
And if you can see the oboe here, it looks very much the same, but it's the lowest note is, let's see, B flat below middle C. I, I have always loved the oboe uh, for its nostalgic, old sound. Okay, I should have practiced it a bit more. <laughs> but I mean, uh, all of these blend so well together. So let me just quickly. I don't have I don't have that reverb activated. But listen to this. Can you feel the, the old nostalgic tone? I, I simply love it. I did one more thing, by the way, to blend the sections. So this is a bonus tip, has nothing to do with the plugin, basically. But what I did is, if I go into the string section, I added a spaces uh, to reverb from East West. And what I did, I put it on Hollywood scoring stage, uh, but I put the strings back. You, you can choose like front or back for this convolution setting. And then I put the V wins on the same scoring stage, but front. So you, I don't know if you can see it FR for front here. And now together they get more of that cinematic Hollywood sound and you create that more sense of space. So listen to this. I just wanted to do that for the, that you know the cream on the top. Um, so let's let's dive back into the oboe here again. Uh, so I mean the virtual space is not really needed. You can put it on. Let's say. Uh, wait a minute. I thought this was a reverb. So this is a mistake. I haven't noticed. You can put it here on closed mics. Let's let's try that. Let's see. Let's see if I just. Uh, I need to deactivate the east west again. So then. Uh, use. Okay. And then put that on version. I, I'm not sure if I hear a difference. If I put. Okay, so it's back. And then. Uh, the the so, uh, final thing that like uh, not bothers me, but I do the mistakes all the time. They have a tab for mix, virtual space, and prefs, and that, I just want to I want to go back. I need to click this again to go to go back. I, I would have loved like home or whatever you know main here, like so I can switch between the tabs because now it's tab, mix tab, the virtual space, the prefs, and then. Where I want to go back, I have to click there. Not super intuitive, in my opinion. Okay, uh, so that's virtual. I, I mean, the, the virtual space, that's what you need. Okay, so oh, okay, so I, I, I take it back. You actually need the virtual space. That's why it's on by default, because that's uh, the convolution of whatever engine they use for this. And then room size. Let's put it very cl close. Yeah, so room size, stereo width. I mean, I would probably put it on default and use the seat position. Perhaps change this just to try out. Because it does change the stereo width and sense of the room. And I personally wouldn't, will probably not go into the preferences as much. 
uh, just use the default for those. Now, uh, what are my final thoughts about this collection? The V-Wins uh, Double Raids has, so <laughs> as you can probably tell, I am a huge fan. I am a huge fan, as I said in the beginning of this video, of physical modeling. Playable instruments! I mean, I wish all sample libraries... I, I hate key switching so much, it's my nemesis. I want to be able to play, perform a line from start to end in the recording with my tools here, without programming uh, or editing, like, uh, too much afterwards. And key switching, I hate that. So, uh, I also heard they are working on V-Winds... Um, woodwinds or v-winds like the flutes and clarinets and stuff um because these are the double reeds so they you can get the whole uh woodwind family and uh, my biggest hope is that they actually do the the strings and the brass uh, so you get a full orchestra in in this plugin with this sound with this playability because oh man that would be amazing um so uh I, I mean, I want you to go check them out, even though I'm not sponsored, I'm not affiliated. Be why? Because I want them to have the resources to continue developing these instruments. They have become uh, one of my favorite developers. I have Spectrasonic still as my... I'm a huge Spectrasonics fan, like Omnisphere and Keyscape and stuff. Uh, Heaviosity, Spitfire Audio, but I mean... Don't forget about this company. It's, I don't know, It's they are not new, but they are taking the world, the music production, composition world by storm with these amazing playable instruments that you can sculpt the tone and room and staging of um, and really blend in your orchestral and cinematic music and of course you can do a close up and do like big band and stuff if you want, if you want to as well. So that is V-Wins Double Reads. I will leave a link below for you to check it out. And then I will see you in the next video, my friends.